We're going to start in about one minute. Yeah, Steve. Steve Preston. Hey, Jeff. Such an email later this afternoon. You probably haven't seen it. Oh, no, huh? Yeah. Is this is this another gambling class or license? Yeah. This legit. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, one of them is kind of. I think they're both going to have gaming. I'm going to. I'm going to introduce some discussion about maybe putting more to the class or license. Okay. For a year or something like that until we let this thing kind of sort itself out. I'll, I'll just. Okay. I think. We're, yeah, we're going to need some legal input on it, but start right. the discussion. Yeah. A real handy little book. Yeah. That's playable. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah, everything's playable. A piece of his stationery. Um, that I had just gotten not long ago and I put it on my desk and I went, well, this is memorabilia. Yeah. <laughs> Self-destructed. Well, self yeah. Uh-oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh there's water on the table. You know what that means. <laughs> Somebody doesn't have faith in us. That means what? Somebody doesn't have faith in us. We got everybody. We do. <laughs> Call to order a special meeting for the normal local liquor commission. Please call the roll. Commissioner Coos. Here. Mrs. Reese. Here. Mr. Fritzen. Here. Mr. McCarthy. Here. Mr. Preston. Mr. Scott. Ms. Gates. Here. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to consider two uh, liquor license requests. The first is uh, uh, Pan Huang uh, LLC doing business as Wings Express at <coughs> 616 uh, Rab Road, Units B and C. And this is for a Class C license, beer and wine only. New approval. Second. Discussion on this license? Please call the roll. Mrs. Reese? Aye. Mr. Fritzen? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Ms. Gaines? Aye. Uh, the liquor, uh, Class C liquor license is approved. And we have an, uh, a request for a Class O liquor license from Blackhawk Restaurant Group, LLC. Uh, doing business is the MS Eatery at 1700 Parkway Drive in Normal. Motion for approval. Move so approval. Move. Okay. Thank you. Is there a discussion on this item? Mr. Fritzen? I have a question similar to the last uh, special meeting we had where we approved uh, some Class O licenses. Uh, I'm uh, curious, uh, the, the floor plan mentions games. Is that uh, gaming licenses from the state? Is that what that indicates? Yes, they will have. Same with Wing Express, isn't it? Well, thank you. Further on this item? Uh, please call the roll. Mr. Fritzen? No. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Ms. Gaines? Aye. Mrs. Reese? Aye. Uh, the liquor license, uh, the Class O liquor license is approved for Blackhawk Restaurant Group. Uh, further discussion before motion for adjournment? Mr. Fritzen? Yes. Uh, I uh, would like to begin the discussion. I don't know, that I don't have a proposal necessarily ready, but uh, considering the future of the Class O license, uh, I think there was some excitement at first when we uh, created this uh, designation <coughs> because of, um, you know, a particular uh, entity that was uh, 
hoping to open in uptown normal. And uh, of course, we can't limit to just those that fit that model. Uh, and the licenses that have been approved do meet uh, uh, the ordinance as it's written. I understand that. And uh, yet, uh, it seems that uh, the license is being used uh, so far, the, you know, the last couple of actions uh, to uh, set up a gaming operation with uh, food as an incidental, food and, as an incidental. So um, I don't, you know, to me, at least for me, that was not uh, my uh, intent when I voted in favor of a Class O license. Um, I uh, really don't uh, want to see a proliferation of these uh, outlets and uh, uh, personally, I think we ought to discuss or consider a moratorium on issuing any more of these licenses for at least a year until we have an opportunity to uh, uh, assess the results of issuing these licenses and their, their impact. Um, I think it, the other liquor licenses, uh, license uh, designations that we have in town with uh, for restaurants uh, require the, the fully operating kitchen uh, equipped in a certain way to serve uh, you know, the f prepared foods. Um, I think the question of fairness comes into play here with uh, those uh, licenses and uh, the history of, uh, of uh, liquor control within the town of Normal, which we have uh, adjusted as we've gone over the last uh, couple of decades to uh, adjust different uh, closing hours and to uh, get away from the auditing and 50-50 you know, 51% from something other than alcohol to a more workable solution that we have now. And now we've introduced uh, a new wrinkle to it that I think uh, uh, is uh, probably really goes against what uh, normal has stood for for a long time. So uh, I, uh, like I said, I don't have a particular proposal tonight. I don't know that I want to make a motion to, to consider that now, but I would uh, like staff perhaps to look into uh, the viability of uh, such a moratorium and uh, uh, report back to us uh, you know, with, at our next uh, uh, meeting, if we could, uh, or in the interim, uh, through uh, memos that uh, whether or not uh, such an action is something that uh, would be advisable or, or inadvisable. Yeah. Ms. Gaines? <clears throat> Along that line, I'm wondering, is, is there anything with the state law or can there be anything on a local level where um, ATMs cannot be in the same operation as uh, a gaming facility? Mr. We're all going to look at you, Mr. Day. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing currently in the state law. Um, there may be some potential. We can do more research on home rule abilities. I think under our home rule powers, we've got some regulatory authority that may be outside the scope of the state statute. There's currently cases pending in the first appellate district of Illinois to the exact extent of those home rule powers, but we may have some abilities to do regulation outside of the scope of the state statute. Because I guess I'm, thank you, I'm just thinking that, you know, as there are a lot more proliferation of this, that um, um, I think that might be a prudent thing, not that I think people can't control themselves and need an adult to take care of them, but I've heard so many horror stories and have seen many horror stories um, where all of a sudden phew, the money is totally gone and there's big problems then that follow. And unfortunately, those big problems often affect the community. So. Um, Ms. Keynes, for fl clarification, we'll do some research. So your interest would be to restrict ATMs from these establishments? Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll check into that um, and see if we can locally <coughs> enact that kind of regulation. I think, too, uh, we're, we're going to have an opportunity to meet when we go into strategic retreat, uh, maybe to take this as a topic for that <coughs> and really have a good discussion about it. Um, so, uh, w unless you want to hear right away, Mr. Fritzen. Well, my concern would be that uh, somebody hurries up and puts together a plan, a business plan, and uh, presents another, uh, uh, you know, possibility for a license. I suppose uh, 
I could uh, say ask that uh, we not consider anymore until a rec our next regular meeting of <coughs> the uh, Liquor Commission and not have any special meetings to consider uh, licenses of that nature. And I think that next. probably would put us beyond the, uh, the retreat dates. That, that's something we can certainly look at. Our next regular meeting would be uh, first meeting in July. Okay. So it would give us time to, to do some research and discussion on this item. Thank you. Yeah, if there's anything specific you'd like staff to, to research, <coughs> uh, please let us know and we can get on that uh, rather quickly. Uh, it, it may just require a, a conversation among all of you on the issue, but if there's any specific ideas that you may have regarding you know further regulation of this activity we'd be happy to to do some homework and get some information out to you as soon as possible so it, give that some thought over the next day or two and email mr peterson with with ideas or thoughts or questions sure motion for approval uh, <coughs> motion for adjournment so moved second please call the roll mr mccarthy Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Mr. Haynes? Aye. Mrs. Reese? Aye. Mr. Fritzen? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. The special meeting for liquor is adjourned. Call to order a regular meeting for the Normal Town Council for April 6, 2015. Please call the roll. Mayor Coos? Here. Mrs. Reese? Aye. Mr. Fritzen? Here. <laughs> Here. Mr. McCarthy? Here. Mr. Preston? Here. Mr. Scott? Here. Ms. Gaines? Here. We'll begin with a <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> As always, we begin with uh, our omnibus agenda items, and these are items that are considered routine in nature and will be handled by one vote unless a council member would like to pull an item for discussion. And I would like to be excused from voting on any bills. I may have incurred my duties as mayor. Mr. Fritzen. I'd ask to uh, be excused from voting on the Bloomington offset bill. Mrs. Reese. I'd like to be excused from voting on any bills submitted by Advocate Broman or any bills incurred in the course of my duties. Thank you. Mr. Scott. Yes, I'd like to pull item F, please. I should uh, point out that um, item J is not going to be considered tonight at the request of um, um, the owners of this uh, uh, business. Uh, one of the owners was out of town and not able to uh, uh, review the agreement that was sent to him, so we'll bring that forward to our next meeting. Mr. Fritz. Item E, please. E? E, yes, as an Ed. <coughs> Move approval. Thank you. Second. Items of in consideration tonight are uh, approval of the minutes of the public hearing of March 16th, 2015, and uh, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of uh, March 16th, 2015, uh, approval of town nor of normal expenditures for payment as of March 31st, 2015, a motion to waive the formal bid process and authorize the purchase of a passenger van from state joint purchasing <coughs> for the administration fleet of pool vehicles and an associated budget adjustment. A motion to accept the low quote and approve the purchase of two Nissan, uh, 2015 Nissan Frontier light duty trucks from Extreme Nissan of Bloomington in the amount of $28,162.86. A <coughs> uh, motion to authorize the renewal of the town's participation in the Municipal Insurance Cooperative agency insurance program and that's for the plan year 2015-2016 to begin on May 1st, 2015. Uh, resolution to authorize the city manager to enter into a construction agreement with uh, Cybern LLC uh, to manage the construction and installation of fiber optic cable in Uptown Normal and approve a budget adjustment in the amount of $43,427 for the project. Uh, resolution authorizing the filing of the town's community development block grant, five-year consolidated plan, and 2015-2016 annual action plan. Please call the roll. Mrs. Reese. 
Aye. Mr. Fritzen? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Ms. Gaines? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. The omnibus is approved with the exception of <clears> item <throat> E, which is a motion to award the um, bid for Truman Hoover Coolidge Cherry Maple Street Water Main Replacement Project to start <coughs> excavating in a total cost of $1,970,100. Mr. Fritzen. To approval. Thank you. Second. Mr. Fritzen. Uh, just the reason I pulled was uh, uh, the description of the work that needs to be done uh, would indicate that uh, we have some water mains in these areas that are very shaky. And uh, a few years ago, we undertook a water rate study, uh, raised water rates, which uh, you know increased fees have been in the news a lot lately uh, for both of our communities here, and uh, yet. Uh, a few years ago after that study, we determined to put a plan in motion to raise water rates um, over a course of time, and this is why we did that. And uh, I just thought, it, you know, because of the recent discussion about refuse and, and other fees, and, and we do have a, uh, you know, we've talked, uh, I don't know exactly when we're going to do it, but we've talked about uh, a sewer study as well, but uh, the infrastructure in the, in the community is extremely important, and these are, these are uh, somewhat older neighborhoods, some you know, a lot older than the other, but uh, interesting to say in my lifetime, Greenbrier has developed and Greenbrier is one of our older neighborhoods. And so uh, <laughs> they're, in, they're in need of, uh, yeah, we know, we know what we're talking about there, don't we, Sonny? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, you know, these are uh, uh, neighborhoods that uh, have undersized mains or mains that are uh, at risk. And uh, this is the reason why those fee increases were necessary to better serve uh, our needs here without having to borrow or switch money from one account to another, one project to another in order to pay for this type of uh, improvement. Thank you. Mr. Scott. Yes, um, I see that, uh, I appreciate Mr. Fritz in opening this, uh, this for discussion. I see where we're uh, uh, permitting about 210 days or about six months or a little over six months for completion before there are any liquidated damage that would be assessed to that project. How much time uh, do we expect uh, the residents to be impacted uh, I know it's over several several months, it's several blocks, but an individual that's living in the middle of one of these streets, will they be without uh, being able to get to their property for one week, two weeks, or will it be a split? Th there Just will curious. be, yeah, there may be periods of time where it's a couple of weeks. I'll let Steve talk in specific uh, detail, but we obviously we try to minimize that disruption to the extent we can through scheduling, but Steve... I don't know, if, uh, we probably will, some of those details will emerge as we discuss those with the contractor and find out exactly how they're going to phase and schedule the project. Do you have any sense of it at this stage, Steve? Not at this point as to what sections will come first and which are going to be last. That'll right. be pretty much up to the contractor. Um, part of the contract is they will have to have access to their driveways every day, every, every day. evening. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean they're going to be able to park on the street Okay. all day every day uh, because there'll be certain times usually a week or less uh, that that equipment will be within that block so to speak and and there won't be any parking on the street the streets in in uh, Greenbrier in particular are rather narrow and uh, a lot of one-car garages and a lot of parking on the street and there just is not enough room for construction equipment and parking on the street in the very vicinity that they're working in. And they'll slide that area that's closed off uh, down the street as they move, but everybody is, is going to have access to their driveway every evening. That's really good news, Steve. I appreciate that. And, so, and, and as far as disruption to their front yards, we're looking at four to six feet maybe inside their lawn area that Correct. would potentially be disturbed, and then they would, that would be refreshed upon the completion of the project? Correct. Okay, that helps. Thank you. <clears throat> Mrs. Reese? Um, recently, I, I found myself out uh, uh, calling on some of my neighbors and uh, spoke with a lady that I hadn't gotten to know, but she indicated that she was leaving. She was leaving normal. She was going back to Chicago, and she was not happy. And I asked her what, what was her concern, and she said, I'm so frustrated with going down a street and finding as I drive down that the street is blocked, I can't get through, I don't know how to get to where I'm going, and when I get there, I don't know how to get back home. And so it, it prompted my thinking as we're talking here 
to ask the process we'll be going through to alert others that might be driving in that area that the streets are going to be blocked next Thursday or Friday or can we even give that kind of uh, advance notice is it online can you talk about that a little bit the schedule is kind of uh, fluid at all times due to the weather and of course what uh, obstacles they run into what sewer, encounters sewer they care. have mm -hmm. um, but we will be having a meeting with all the affected residents or at least a meeting they can come to they don't have to uh, obviously show up but we will have meet with them and explain what we're doing and and any of those that are concerned are more than encouraged to to uh, come to that meeting where we can explain what's going to happen and, and how it's going to uh, come about. As soon as we have a pre-construction meeting with the contractor, uh, he will be giving us a uh, bar chart uh, schedule, uh, proposed schedule uh, for his activities. Uh, very seldom is that adhered to strictly, uh, again, because of the weather, because of uh, encountering unforeseen conditions within the construction. Uh, so it's usually kind of a day-to-day -day thing. Uh, okay. Trying to look out more than a, a week ahead is, is very difficult. Would meetings with the residents likely be here? Um, the last time we had them, we had them at, at the annex. Uh, it's a little bit easier to get to. Conference mm -hmm. room C is a, a little more conducive to that, that sort of round table where we can get residents together and say, this is mm -hmm. what our schedule is. This is how it's supposed to work. This is the name of the contractor. If you have a problem, contact us, and here's the name of the contractor if, it's, mm -hmm. if you and, need to get a hold of him. And Mrs. Reese, I will add two things. Uh, we will also communicate uh, information directly to each uh, property if they're not able to get to the meeting, so they have all this in writing. We are trying to do a better job uh, with these kinds of projects using social media uh, where we can keep people updated day to day. We do get questions, and oftentimes it's, weather related where a street is opened up and they don't see the contractor for two or three days and they're saying what is going on well there's usually a reason the contractor's not there again the way we've structured this this contract there he, he, the contractor's motivated to get the work done as quickly as possible but um there's usually reasons why they're not there we're going to try to do a better job of pushing that information out on social media giving you know real-time updates and usually it's oftentimes it's weather related sometimes it's uh, they're waiting for uh, uh, settling or concrete to cure or a variety of reasons why they may not be working that day. And I think people feel b better about it if they know the reason as opposed to when they just don't see any activity and they're frustrated because they aren't able to have complete access to their property. So we're using social media, both Twitter and uh, Facebook. Uh, we hope to uh, uh, send out those alerts to, to people in, the, in that neighborhood so they're you know, aware of what's going on. Because um, we know uh, there are many people that just can't get away to go to a, an informational meeting. Right. Uh, and so we'll try to do our best to communicate with everybody in the neighborhood, irrespective of their ability to attend a meeting or not. And, and this particular lady wasn't speaking about in her neighborhood. It was just trying to get across the community. And uh, I think she had visions that there would be a sign uh, perhaps before you entered a long street that said it's blocked down there. I don't know what she had in mind, but it, she was not living there. It was just maneuvering around the community, <coughs> and especially during the summer months when there's so much construction and road work going on that you have in mind how you're going to get someplace, <coughs> and you find yourself deep into it and then discovering you can't. There may, may not be an easy answer. I'm just trying to bring her, her concern and her um, anguish uh, to light at this moment. We try and get uh, warning signs up that road closed ahead and those sorts yes, of things. That, For that. safety reasons, as much as anything else, uh, it's better if we don't have traffic in the area that the work's going on. However, saying that, it's sometimes impossible to tell where everybody's going and how they're going right. to get there and, and the best way for them to do that. Uh, one size doesn't generally fit all. Right. Thank you. That's just your concern. Just to, to piggyback on Mr. Fritzen's comment, I'm glad he brought that up. This, this, it's a great point. Uh, we're really pleased to be able to do projects like this. And without that 
rate increase, we would not be doing projects like this. And I, I'll, I'll have to ask Steve to, you know, when when that water rate, significant water rate study was completed and that increase enacted, we have done thousands and thousands of miles, replaced thousands of miles of water main. I'll have Steve put a report together. I know he's got it all together, as well as other improvements in our system, uh, a number of plant upgrades, I mean, significant water plant upgrades that we could not have done uh, not have accomplished without the, the the funds from the increase. So this is all good. I mean, this 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 is making our system much more viable. It's going to save money in the long run through uh, our our not having to respond on emergency repairs so frequently. It's going to be uh, provide better service to the residents. So in the long run, it's all good, and we're lucky that we have the resources to maintain the system. I can tell you, many many communities do not have these resources, and they. They just live with these old mains that are in bad condition, and they they slap a patch on them and hope they hold. And uh, so this is this is really positive, and and it really all ties back to the, our ability and to to have the resources through the through the water rate adjustment. So uh, I'll task you, Steve, and I'm sure you can put together a report. Just an, it'd be interesting to see an outline of everything that we've been able to accomplish the last. It's probably been five or six years. And, and I think you'll be amazed at how much uh, we've gotten done with that additional money. Yep. Mr. Fritzen? I believe, too, if I'm not mistaken, uh, materials that we're using today, too, uh, are withstand the corrosive aspect of the, of the ground around here and our water and everything else. So not only will it save money in the long run, but <coughs> down the road, repairs won't be ne as needed as they are, as they are right. now. Correct. So. Absolutely. Further on the item? Please call the roll. Mr. Fritzen? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Ms. Gaines? Aye. Mrs. Reese? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. The motion is approved. Item F is a motion authorizing the city manager to negotiate a purchase agreement for the property at 308 East Locust Street. Mr. Scott? Move approval. Thank you. Second. Mr. Scott? Yes, uh, it was just a few short months ago that we um, voted on another similar motion for 105 Poplar Street uh, where we had a piece of property that was dilapidated and it was purchased by a developer and they've built a nice home on that property and, and uh, that property as well as this one at 308 Locust were both brought to me by neighboring residents, one of whom happens to be in our audience this evening. And, and um, while I don't, I don't think that the town of Normal should get into the real estate business per se, but I think that um, in instances like this, where the property is in very bad, bad condition, where we can make the purchase quickly, do a, a reasonable um, contract with another developer or with another property owner soon to, to improve that property, I think it's a good mechanism for us to, to engage in. And uh, like I say, I don't want to be in the real estate business, but for a short term, I think this is a, a very good approach to handling some of the properties that we have that are in really bad condition in this community, of which I'm very thankful there's a very, very small number. Yes. So <laughs> Not um, many. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with this, and I think this is a good approach. Let, let me just add, thank you, Mr. Scott. I agree with you. We don't do this very often. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have to. We don't have many properties like this one. And frankly, the photos in your packet really make the property look better than it really <laughs> is. It's uh, Greg uh, and his staff have taken hundreds of interior and exterior photos, and it is in really, really bad condition. The neighborhood has dealt with this for an, uh, uh, three or four years. I know Inspections has been dealing with this. And so an opportunity has presented itself, uh, we hope. Uh, our concern is if we don't intervene, there are people that will buy properties like this, put just a little bit of money into them, and it really needs more than a little bit. Mm -hmm. the, the structure needs to come down. Mm -hmm. It's that bad. But there are people that will try, opportunistic real estate investors, who will try to patch something together, and they'll put uh, a family in there, uh, in a situation which it may meet bare minimum of, of uh, standards and and then the pro the problem continues to recur and that's one of the concerns we have uh, by controlling the property going ahead and getting the getting the home demolished and 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 then whether we sell it or gift it whatever we in the long run we know we're going to get 
a new structure there that is going to contribute positively to the neighborhood as opposed to this one which has been really a drag on a very nice uh, residential neighborhood in that area of town so i know greg has worked very hard on this and his staff for uh, not just the last few weeks for a couple of years and uh, it's nice to see hopefully a light at the end of the tunnel thank you for your comment <coughs> mr fritzen when i was reading through the report uh, it brought to mind uh, what we used to call the Middleton Fund uh, yes. for retiring non-conforming uses. Uh, it was a right. proposal Randy Middleton made years ago, and we started putting money aside in our budget to uh, uh, bring uh, multifamily conversions back to single-family use. And uh, again, I'm, I agree with Mr. Scott. You know, it's not our place to be in the real estate business, but there have been occasions that precede you know, this type of action where we did uh, encourage um, and incentivize uh, properties to be returned to, you know, what their original purpose was and help preserve neighborhoods. And it's one reason, I think, uh, as you've alluded to, that we don't have a lot of uh, properties uh, in, in this kind of condition within the community. Further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Ms. Gaines? Aye. Mrs. Reese? Aye. Mr. Fritzen? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. The motion is approved. We have two items of general orders tonight that are both related to each other. The first is a resolution authorizing a land donation and development agreement with Habitat for Humanity at uh, 1001 Franklin Avenue. Move approval. Thank you. Second. Second. Discussion on the item? Ms. Gaines? Um, when I was reading through this, Okay. Is it saying that there sh can be two houses on that property, or are you saying just that could be up to three? Two. Greg, you want to come it up? It seems awfully small two. for three. <laughs> That's why I asked. And two. I thought I read in here somewhere it couldn't be more than three. Uh, to, to answer your question, it'd just be two. Okay. Um, it's an unusually large, I shouldn't say unusually large, it's somewhat typical of that neighborhood. There's some long, deep lots, um, but based on Habitat's footprint and the size of the home they typically build, it was ample to put, create two lots out of the one large lot. So that's what, and in fact, the second action tonight is the approval of the subdivision plat, which will show that, so. Okay. Thank you. Further? No, that's good. Please call the roll. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Ms. Gaines? Aye. Mrs. Reese? Aye. Mr. Fritzen? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. Resolution is approved. Item seven is a resolution approving the final plat of the building uh, hope subdivision by expedited process. Again, this is 1001 Franklin. Move, move approval. Thank you. Second. Um, discussion on this item? Please call the roll. Oh. Oh. I just had a quick question of, so are they both gonna be facing Franklin or is one gonna be facing? Bo both will be oriented facing Church Street. Church Street, mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Further? Please call the roll. Mr. Scott? Aye. Ms. Gaines? Aye. Mrs. Reese? Aye. Mr. Fritzen? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. That resolution is also approved. We have one item of new business tonight, and that is a motion to approve reappointments to various boards and commissions. Motion for approval, please. Move approval. approval. Second. And um, as this is a matter of personnel, there will be no discussion unless a council member would like to take this lengthy list to uh, uh, executive session. And seeing no such request, please call the roll. Ms. Gaines? Aye. Ms. Reese? Aye. Mr. Fritzen? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. The uh, reappointments are approved. Mrs. Reese, we've got Quite a, quite a list there. We have a nice list of people that have uh, uh, continued to serve our community in a variety of ways. We have uh, five appointments to the Building Board of Appeals. Marty Behrens, Rick Bozier, Guy DiCiula, Fred Hahn, and uh, Brian Redd. We have uh, three appointments to the Historic Preservation Commission, Kathy Burgess, Ann Motter, and Laurie Christensen. We have one to the Human Relations Commission. That's William, otherwise known as Terry Brown, a Planning Commission appointment of A.J. Zimmerman, 
a sister city committee appointment of Darren Sampson, three Uptown Design Review Commissioners, Dave Bernison, Dennis French, and Sarah Cathro, and two Zoning Board of Appeals uh, reappointments, Janet Hood and Randy Schaub. Nice list of people, thank you. Thank you. Um, before um, an adjournment, um, I think we have one item of business, um, and Gary Little, if you would come up front here and have a seat in this chair. Uh, Gary, this is Gary's last meeting, and uh, you still work for us, so you gotta come up here. Um, uh, this is Gary's last meeting here, and we will have a, a formal uh, uh, kind of farewell ceremony to Gary at uh, Ironwood Country Club uh, Clubhouse from three to six on Friday afternoon. Um, I'm going to turn this oh over to the God. city manager. I have no idea what he's going to do here, but I'm sure it's not going to be pretty. No, we, really, we're going to take it easy on Gary tonight. Friday's a different matter. Uh-oh. Uh, three to six at, at Ironwood, and certainly the public's invited. Uh, gosh, Gary, it seems like it was just yesterday that I, I, I wined and dined you at the McDonald's in Forsyth to lure you from Decatur, and it oh worked. My. Yeah. Man, it was you were a cheap date, but I appreciated it. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of money back then. So, um, but, you know, obviously Gary has been a tremendously valuable member of the staff. And I mentioned it at staff meeting this morning. Uh, he manages one of those departments that are almost unmanageable. There are so many things going on in our Parks and Rec department. It is incredible. Every day there are 150 things happening, and it takes a special kind of person to keep – all those balls in the air at the same time. And he acknowledged part of it is having a great staff, mm -hmm. and Gary's done a great job of assembling a really very, very high-performing staff, And uh, but it still takes that leadership and, and uh, establishing a sense of direction. I wouldn't, wouldn't call Gary, uh, you know, he certainly uses the facilities. Uh, the golf course is one that I wouldn't say that Gary's a great golfer, but he does uh, – he does run a nice golf course uh, at Ironwood, among other things. And uh, there's supposed to be a – I think there's supposed to be something going here, I guess. <laughs> that was the cue, the golf course. Oh, there's a little video or a little something, and somebody's doing the golf course. Watch out. It says – <laughs> oh, 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 there's Gary. Uh, no. That's How did the I know that hat. Going to appear somewhere in there. <laughs> that, uh, that hat that Gary has donned has uh, appeared in a lot of special videos, and it will probably be make an appearance on Friday, too. So, yeah. Such a great photo. We just, and Mark Clinch just loves to get it out whenever he has an opportunity. Say, well, we have an opportunity to see the actual hat. Well, I don't know if the actual hat still exists or not, but uh, the photo will live in infamy. Um, but, uh, but seriously, Gary, I mean, there, there's just too many accomplishments really to list, but just a few. Shepherd Park, of course, is a huge. We worked on that how many years? Uh, was one time going to be called Greenbrier Park. Years and years and years to get that done, and Gary saw it through, and it is really a sensational park. Uh, and, and I think the most, maybe the most popular of all the amenities in that park, and Scott Preston will attest, the dog park is probably the most popular. And Gary, of course, is the king of the dog parks. And uh, But certainly expansion to Constitution Trail and the Connie Link Amphitheater, the Children's Discovery Museum. Uh, certainly, we've uh, Gary continued the tradition of uh, hosting uh, uh, national uh, softball tournaments at Champion Fields. I mean, I could go on and on and on. There are lots and lots of accomplishments, but uh, uh, we certainly appreciate Gary. You'll, you'll be missed. Uh, we're envious of you because I know you've got lots of plans. Uh, I don't know if this is public information, but it's not. I think Gary owns 17 motorcycles that he's got to restore. He restores uh, old motorcycles, many of them triumphs, but he's getting into some new things. And uh, he's quite a Jimmy Buffett fan, so keep that in mind, too. So we'll have some Jimmy Buffett food on Friday, a lot of sponge cake and cheeseburgers. And, there you go. <laughs> and I think flip-flops are mandatory. Yeah. Uh, so, again, thank you, Gary. And, and again, I think there'll be a, a formal presentation to you on Friday at the event because your family will undoubtedly be there, and they'll want to be part of it. So uh, 
don't know if you have any parting well, words. Thank you, Mark. I, I, it, it's, it's been fun. Um, the 12 years have gone by extremely um, fast. Um, uh, I would just like to, as, as Mark said, I, I have a wonderful staff uh, that's really committed to, to um, improving the community and helping people, and, and that's always important. Um, you know, I, I appreciate you know the support that that both Mark and Pam and and others have shown me, and of course, counsel. Uh, that's extremely important. Uh, as I said all along, I think uh, the council gets it when it comes to the importance of uh, Parks and Rec in, in attracting business and people to the community, and uh, driving that economic. Uh, um, uh, end of, of the of the business as well so I would just like to say thank you and and thank you for all your help in the, you know, over the past 12 years and and uh, if if you're not doing th anything Friday afternoon come out and see us all right Good. thank you great thank you, Gary. Are there other comments or concerns? Mr. Fritzen? Well, one of Gary's uh, supervisors was recognized as well. We received a uh, press release today, and uh, Carrie Fry is going to be inducted into the Illinois Amateur Softball Association Hall of Fame. And uh, I couldn't let this one go, I, even though Carrie's not here tonight. But last year, Carrie was one of those who uh, thought I sh should get a plaque of some sort for finally being smart enough to say I'm done playing softball, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the the uh, national tournaments you mentioned, state tournaments, uh, international tournaments, the Olympic team appearances, and whatever uh, you know the Parks and Rec staff and Carrie Fry in particular is what makes uh, Champion Fields go and uh, makes it uh, one of those things we look back on, kind of like Constitution Trail, and say, "Man, I'm glad we did that." and uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of staff, a lot of volunteers, uh, but it always falls back on one person to manage those types of events and, and facilities, and uh, Carrie has, has handled it well and, and is being recognized for that. So I thought uh, we should uh, recognize Carrie as well, and I'm sure Gary would be the first one to say here, here for, uh, for his uh, supervisor of adult rec. Great. Thank you. Excellent. Further comments? Mr. Scott? Yes, I do have a comment. Um, not about Gary in this case, but thank you for your years of service and your friendship. <laughs> um, last week, there was a community-wide emergency management uh, plan drill that was hosted by Illinois State University, but there were about 250 people from around the community, first responders, uh, normal fire, normal police, other first responders from this community, from Bloomington, from the state police, from uh, EMTs. I mean, there were people from all over the state, state police. Um, and about 50 or 60 student volunteers that were all dressed in needing triage, we'll say. And um, it, was, um, it was a very good experience. Uh, it's good to be a part of a drill like that. Uh, the professionalism that I saw in all of the first responders, uh, my hat goes off to every one of them. It was very, very professional. They did an exceptional job. And I think that uh, even though the university hosted it, the town of Normal was very much engaged in this in this process, and I think that the entire community benefits when we're prepared and ready for an emergency. This um, particular drill uh, was uh, an active shooter on campus, and um, it, it emulated um, um, several shooters, uh, several several people with weapons, and uh, even um, some some uh, um, we'll we'll say pretend uh, fatalities. And so people were transported to uh, to local hospitals and and health center and the like. And it was it was extremely well done, very very thorough, and um, something I was very proud to be a part of. And I wanted to thank uh, the normal uh, police and fire and others that were engaged in that for their participation. Because as I said, it, we we are all a better community because we make have these drills. Great, thank you. Mr. Peterson? I have heard uh, also really wonderful things about that drill. Uh, we had, as you said, people involved. I know Terry Legner was there as an observer, and she was. She reported to me how impressed she was about how uh, coordinated that was, particularly with the, the, uh, the university offices working together as a team 
that it was extraordinarily well done and it again it makes us all feel more comfortable that if the real thing occurs heaven forbid we will be ready so i i i think that's terrific and i'm glad that the university reached out to the community and we were certainly happy to participate in that so thank you i also want to just acknowledge quickly an item on consent agenda and it was i think pretty proud of this uh the renewal of our insurance coverage under the MICA program, and, and those of you who have been around a while know, Normal has been uh, it has purchased its insurance coverage through the Municipal Insurance Cooperative Agency since 1984, and uh, it has been a, an outstanding program. We have benefited so much from this program over the years, not only with excellent rates, but uh, periodic uh, premium rebates that you know are of, of quite significant to us this year uh, you don't see too often where insurance rates drop but we had a significant decrease in our insurance rate due to good experience and I credit the staff the department heads the supervisors for making safety a, a priority in this organization uh, but we saved uh, the budget savings of about two hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars just in our insurance premium this year and again that is due primarily to excellent uh, <coughs> loss control services so Andrew uh, is our representative on the MICA board I used to be and I, I got too old and I think I hit the mandatory retirement age and they <laughs> I left uh, but uh, thanks to Andrew and thanks to all of our staff for excellent loss control services and that's it's that that's a significant tangible benefit two hundred twenty eight thousand dollar budget savings that can be used for other things or put into the reserves to address unexpected needs that may occur throughout the year so uh, I had to point that out because I think that's a tremendous accomplishment and everyone deserves credit for it thank you further comments move we adjourn second and before I take that vote, I'm just going to remind everybody to vote tomorrow. Yeah. Please call the roll. Mrs. Reese? Aye. Mr. Fritzen? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Ms. Gaines? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Can I see you? Go Badgers. I was tickled and enthused. <laughs> you a little bit. Hey, Adam. Steve Gertis. G E R D E S. Gertis. He's the director. Okay. You bet. Uh, well, tonight, we can also take action to donate those uh, back parcel to the property. We're going to divide it up into two separate lots, and they're going to build a house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.